Hello, I'm Andrew. I go to the Dalton School, and this year I'll be a sophomore there. So I did two pretty big projects this summer, and this is my second one, which is a GPS-guided car. Here's my GPS-guided rover, and there are a bunch of different parts that come together and make this thing work. Right on the front is a digital compass module that needs to be far away from the motors because it's highly affected by any magnetic fields. So it's mounted up here, and it's facing right toward the front of the, the rover. Uh, right behind it is a small LED indicator that displays direction, so as it's trying to turn, it'll light up a specific LED to indicate its target. Then here's the actual Arduino, which stores the code and makes everything happen, and on top of it is, is a motor controller that drives these big motors. And as you can see, it's getting kind of complicated with the wiring, but everything is working really well. And then on the back is the GPS module, which is also very critical to the project. And that just takes in GPS data, which when it connects to a satellite, and then transmits it to a serial port on the Arduino Mega. On the back is a 12 volt, 3.8 amp battery, and it's a little damaged, but that goes right into the Arduino, which then routes the power to the motor controller. So the Arduino has to perform some pretty heavy calculations, some trigonometry to actually calculate a path. So it does that by taking in your GPS location and then the GPS location of a target. So the way I send the target location is through this processing sketch I made. And it incorporates a lot of Google Maps data. So I can type in a latitude and longitude or just use the default one, which is Boston, and send it to the Arduino. So once I've done that, the coordinates have been set and they'll drive there. So then once the Arduino gets target coordinates, it makes a path by drawing a right triangle and then finding the angle in between you and the target. And then once that's found, it'll calculate where you need to turn to and then how far you need to drive. So it's constantly using the Haber sign distance formula to check the distance between two latitude and longitude points and then know when you're there or when you need to turn. So right now, this car is calibrating the compass and I just sent it the coordinates of the end of the sidewalk over there. So it's going to drive over there right now, hopefully. And again, GPS is only accurate up to a few meters. So if it gets pretty close, then it's working correctly. So you can see it's, it's turning a bunch of times because every time it moves, every time it runs through the program, it's checking to see if it's oriented properly. So it moved a little and then re reoriented. So if there's a slant in the the sidewalk or whatever, it'll make sure that it's facing the right way. So before it turns or does anything, it calculates its new location based on the GPS. And the GPS is updating at about one hertz, so one time a second. And then it's calculating a new angle it has to travel at, and then the path it needs to go before it actually starts moving. So it's not the fastest of cars, but it's really accurate. And that's probably the most important part if you want a car to be guided by GPS. I don't know if I can see it in the light, but it's also displaying a target, a target heading and a target uh, degree to turn to on this LED circle. And then I guess turning there. My favorite part of Blue Stamp this summer was getting a final product and a project that actually worked. Something that when I turn it on, I know it's gonna go and do what I want it to do. And it's really been a really enjoyable project, and I'm so glad that I did it. One of the hardest parts, though, this wasn't really easy for me, was getting everything to be in the same format and work together and getting the Arduino to know where to go. And that was really hard for me because I just didn't really know where to start. But as you do everything in pieces, starting with the GPS, then the motors and the motor controller and the computer, everything starts to fit together gradually. And once you smooth out the few rough edges, it's been a really great project. Furthermore, I think that I can really combine this project with my bike cyclo computer and add some sort of wireless telemetry 
and location data that's transmitted to the computer. And that'd be really neat to see the first project actually transform into helping the second and then just combine my experiences together.